is going to be like an arms race. We need to reform the FDA. It's hard to invest in your community or your small business when you're paying half your money to healthcare costs. Who can make their citizens live the longest? It's going to help the economy. The longevity dividend. And this is what led you to Senate Bill 422. That's Welcome to Lifespan News. I'm Emmett Short. Right to try laws exist in just 38 states. The most recent addition to this list is Montana, and their newly expanded law removes all patient eligibility requirements, meaning any patient, regardless of their health status, can now seek experimental treatments, essentially sidestepping FDA regulations that restrict access to those types of treatments to patients with life-threatening conditions only. Ken Bogner is now on a mission to bring this legislation and more to the federal level. So the full-length interview is available on the channel, and you can find the link for that in the description. But we wanted to give you a little highlight teaser in a format that you're used to from us. So to start off, I asked Senator Bogner about the origins of his focus on healthcare policy and how it became a central part of his legislative agenda. As I started asking more and more questions to my constituents, I found that a large portion of their money was going to healthcare costs. And I shifted from rural economic development to seeing what I could do at the state level with healthcare policy. Kind of a lot of crossover. It is. If you ran on the economy and then they're like, well, we're spending all our money on healthcare, then it's, it's almost the same issue, I guess. Right. It's hard to invest in your community or, you know, your small business when you're paying half your money to healthcare costs. So if you can reduce those costs, people are going to be able to invest in their communities more. So, and this is what led you to us, right? Because Correct. you, you started getting into the, well, sort of a roundabout way into the longevity space. Maybe you can explain how the longevity piece uh, began to fit into that. I got connected to Alliance for Longevity Initiatives and we started brainstorming. What can we do in Montana that will ease the burden for older Montanans and Montanans in general. And we came up with a bill, Senate Bill 422, which I introduced last legislative session in Montana, that expands medical right to try in Montana. Then I asked Senator Bogner about the future of longevity initiatives and whether Montanans are ready to embrace more government-assisted efforts. In Montana, they're ready to keep going, but they want government out of the way. They want you know, companies and providers to come in and be able to innovate uh, rather than the government standing in the way and, you know, maybe acting as a hindrance to what what this longevity, you know, science industry can provide to Montanans. So very interested and they just want the red tape out of the way. So it's, it's, it's going to be very exciting to see where we go from here as manufacturers and providers come into the state to practice. And like I mentioned, Senator Bogner's ambitions don't stop at the state level. He's now aiming for a broader impact. I'm running for U.S. Congress. I want to take that expanded right to try bill that I passed here in Montana to the federal level, get expanded right to try for the entire country, and start implementing some of these policies that help will help us innovate as a country and look towards prevention and helping with health care costs in that way, rather than you know, spending so much money uh, fighting diseases as they come. We also discussed the financial implications of healthcare policy and how it aligns with national fiscal health. If we can get people, Montana residents, uh, to stay healthier and healthier longer, that cut costs for the state and it helps us move services to other places uh, or cut, cut, cut taxes so people can keep, you know, more of their hard earned dollars in their own pockets. So there was some study done, I showed it in one of the videos that in, on the economy section where for every year of life that you can add to, to overall to the average, uh, say American, it results in, I don't know, it was like 30 some billion dollars a year in added revenue for the economy. So my thought after all this was that this is gonna be like an arms race for who can make their citizens live the longest because it's going to help the economy. The longevity dividend. It's an impressive number, especially when as a country, we're $35 trillion in debt. We need to get that GDP up. 
And if people can stay in the workforce longer and want to, we should be pushing that. We should be innovating that we are leading the world in this type of research because it's going to benefit our country and our citizens so much. Now, if you want to check out a series on how a potential aging cure would affect government, the environment, the economy, and even our own minds, check out the series in the description below. I asked Senator Bogner about some of those topics. And technology gets pretty crazy though. You know, there's AI and, and technology starts moving faster than, you know, the human brain can even sort of keep up with it. I feel like that might cause society to be volatile as well. Because, uh, you know, the more change, the more sort of like social volatility there is. So we can kind of see that already with uh, how fast technology is moving right now. Do you think it might be even beneficial to have some really older people in there with like all that experience? You want diversity. You want to have, you know, some people who've been around for a while and know how things work or had worked. But that's not all you want. You want to bring in some younger people, people with some fresh ideas. That's important too. So you, you need good diversity, but you shouldn't have all of one demographic. So Senator Bogner is clearly driven by a vision not only to expand medical access, but also to ensure long-term health and economic benefits. So we look forward to seeing how his efforts unfold on the national stage. If you'd like to find out more about Ken's campaign, you can check out his website in the description below. A link to the entire interview is down there as well. Let us know who you'd like me to talk to next in the comments section. And remember to like the video so that YouTube knows to show you more of our stuff and subscribe to stay up to date on cutting edge longevity science. You can do that at lifespan.io as well. Cheers.